Hello and very welcome to my next Arch Linux video. So I should have been talking about this a long time ago, but I was doing other things instead of this. So let's uh, talk about how to utilize the long-term support release kernel on our system that we already installed. So if you are following my videos, then you should have already did these. If you are not following my videos, then this is what you should do. You should upgrade your system with the pacman dash capital S lowercase y u uh, command and you should install the LTS kernel as a kind of a fallback kernel on your system. So you can do this with sudo pacman dash s linux LTS. So where we are picking up from this video is that the LTS kernel is um, is is ready to be used, but the grub has not been set up yet. So what's going to happen after you install the LTS kernel is that when you are in the um, in this grub menu, you will have the Arch Linux as your basic uh, the uh, the the this is the entry that will load automatically in like five seconds or something. And you have this advanced options for Arch Linux. And if you go into this advanced options, you will see that, oh, we don't have the LTS kernel here. So we have to set up the grub to know about it. So let's just boot into our, our regular uh, system here. And so you can see it's loading Linux. And I will apologize for not having the uh, the fonts set up for this one. So bear with me. I have all the commands here in this uh, text file for you. So, and I will have the, these commands in the uh, descriptions of the video. So don't worry about that. So what we have to do is we have to set up grub. Oh, and I also have the graphical environment installed on my system, so you can do this before having your graphical system up. It doesn't really matter that much. I just hope. So you can do it from the graphical environment using a uh, terminal emulator, or you can just... TTY, use the TTY. I'm going to use the terminal emulator here because I already have the fonts set up in the terminal emulator. But if you want to do this before installing the graphical environment, you can do that. Or you can just press Ctrl Alt F2 to go to a TTY. I press Ctrl F7 to go back to the graphical system. So now that we are in our uh, terminal emulator here, we can start typing our commands. So let's make the grub config. Oh, what am I doing? So I need to type in my command, which will be sudo, because you need the super user to config the grab, and this would be grub-mkconfig, so it's make config grub make config grub-mkconfig, dash o as a parameter, and then slash boot, slash grub, slash grub dot cfg. Okay, so asks for your password, you give it the password, and it will generate the grub configuration files. And it said it's done. So it found the Linux image as the Linux LTS kernel. And so it's, it's basically done. So let's uh, power off our system. Restart. You, sometimes when I restart in the virtual machine, things uh, don't work for the second time. Okay, so now we are, oh, sorry, now we are in the grub menu, 
So now we have the Arch Linux option here, and in the advanced options we have Arch Linux with Linux, Linux LTS, all these nice things. So I can press the Escape button to go back to the main menu, and let's see what happens if I load up the default option. So it will say Linux initial Linux LTS. So it was it was very fast. We went through that phase of loading the initial. Uh, the initial whatever the initial RAM disk image, but that said, it's the LTS kernel. So, what is happening here is that now the LTS kernel loading the LTS kernel became uh, the default, and I can check this if I log in. So again, you can do this in the graphical environment. You can do this in the character the environment, the TTY, and so let's uh, let's go into the terminal and you can check what system you are running by typing uname dash uname space dash r and it will tell you that this is the LTS kernel that you are running. So What's happening here? How can I change the behavior of the system? And so there are multiple options for this. I tend to be very lazy, so go with the uh, most simple or most easy uh, ways of dealing with this. So if I go to the amazing Arch Linux wiki page for the grub slash tips and tricks uh, entry, and here you can find the multiple entries thingy. So basically here you can find what you have to do to set up some things. So if you have multiple kernels like say Linux and Linux LTS, they will be grouped in the submenu. You can change this behavior by going to this file and disable the submenu. So, you can also do something else, which is just set up so that the grub will remember what you have chosen last time. And I think this is basically the, uh, one of the easiest ways to deal with this. And then you can change the default menu entry so you can set that up to in the same uh, file the etc default dash grub. So why do we have to do this? Because in the if we go back, let me open the grub uh, the page for grub. So. Custom grub.cfg. So basically, what happens is that this the grub uses this grub boot slash grub slash grub cfg file to boot. But if you go to that file, which I will do in a second, so you can just use our you can go there, you know, I, I am. A junkie of the <laughs> graphical environment junkie, I guess. Boot grub, and we have this grub cfg. It's displayed in our text editor, and the first line will tell you that do not edit this file. <laughs> it's automatically generated by grub mk config using templates from etc.grubd and settings from etc default grub. So even though the Arch Wiki tells you uh, how to edit this custom grub CFG file, I don't really <laughs> recommend anyone doing that just because the grub.cfg file tells you that please do not edit me manually. So it's better to uh, edit those files that the make config uses to make that 
uh, grub CFG. So you can disable the submenu, for example, and then you can change the default menu entry. In my uh, case, I think just using the uh, default, so save the default setup is, is also, also a good option because, uh, well, in that case, you boot up the uh, regular Linux kernel. It doesn't, it, like, your system crashes or whatever. It doesn't work. There is some problem with that. So you don't have time to deal with it, so you boot up into the LTS kernel and the LTS kernel works. So, okay, you do your things and maybe you boot, you want to boot to the LTS kernel next time too until you have time to fix what's gone wrong and then you can boot back to the regular Linux kernel and then it will, be, if it works, and you can just keep booting into that so it's it's I think it's not a bad option to make it remember. So okay, so we won't edit this file. Thank you. So we have to find uh, so Etsy and what was it? So we go to Etsy default uh, default default. Grub. So we need to edit this file. It's read only here if I try to edit it this way. And so I, I want to go do it from the terminal because because if you can set this thing up and maybe it's a better idea to set this thing up before you set up the graphical environment. It doesn't make that uh, big of a difference then though. So Okay, so let's just sudo. So I need a super user, uh, super user status to edit this. So just sudo vi slash etc slash default slash grab enter. It asks for my password, of course. And what I need to do is set up grab default to be equal to uh, whatever save grab default what happens okay, as you can see I am not a Vim user VI user so let's just uh, quit yeah let's just quit Let's try this again. Grub default equals sa save. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. I will get a hold of it very soon. Save. Save. The grub default equals saved. Okay. Yeah, I, I need to be in the typing mode for VI work. And then in the end, we have to delete this uh, pound symbol here. So what we need to set up is the grub underscore save default equals true is true. So uncommon to make grub remember the last selection. This requires to set grub default equals save above. We just did that here, and just as the Arch Wiki suggested. So let's press the uh, what is it? The colon W Q to write this, and then we can go back and sudo grub make config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg okay so we will make this file it will generate the grub configuration file for us and now we can uh, restart our system and let's see what happens oh 
Oh, so now I can go to the advanced options and I will select Arch Linux with Linux Linux. Now it's loading the initial RAM disk from Linux Linux. And so the system boots up. Come on, boot up. Boot up system. Thank you. And uh, well, we are waiting for the system to boot up. Very good, we got the login screen. It's either going to be your graphical login or the TTY login, of course. And then we are in. Come on. Open the menu. And let's go to the terminal emulator here and just type in new name dash R. We are not on the LTS kernel right now. Thank you. So let's uh, restart the system again. And let's check if Grub remembers. And you can see it's on the advanced options for Arch Linux. The countdown is counting one and loading Linux Linux. We've done it. It's not loading the LTS kernel by, the, by itself. It loads the option we selected last time. And of course you can try and let's, let's do that. I did not include it in my script for this episode, but we can try to disable the submenu. Because why not? So it's like there is one in the grub menu why don't we like to look at the all the options that are there? I like looking at all the options that are available. So let's try that. And let's uh, edit our, our grub to have all the options. Edit also will remember. And that's good. I like this way because, uh, as I said, if there is something maybe you want to boot into the LTS kernel later to troubleshoot and during that procedure, the troubleshooting procedure, you need to restart your system a few times and you always want to boot back to the LTS kernel for some reason. So I can just <laughs> go back in time here and sudo vi etsy default grub. So here we can change the time out time to and where do I have to change the crop preload modules, crop enable crypt address, terminal input. So what we need disable recovery. Uncomment one of them for the GFX desired an image background or a GFX theme. I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, so it seems like so I have to uh, if you do not like this behavior you can go back and adding the following line to grub disable submenu equals y so I will just add it to my end of my script here so grub disable submenu equals y where can I do that. Grab. There is no uh, option inside here as grab disable Linux, grab disable recovery, grab color, grab theme, grab color highlight. Yeah, you can change colors and theme it. That's something that maybe I want to play with because the grab menu is ugly. <laughs> so we can add here maybe hey why can't I start typing okay I can start typing now 
Okay. I managed to open a new line here. <laughs> That's something. And then we need to add the line. No. I need to type in here. Grab underscore disable underscore submenu equals y. No. Okay. I managed to edit this file in VI. Maybe you want to edit it in a text editor you are familiar with. So grab disable submenu is uh, what we wanted to add here and then we can uh, write and quit and we can try make config and let's see if it works okay so now if I restart my system Will I see all the grab menu items? Yes! And of course I want to boot with Linux. You can see it's loading 242.29-1-arch and if I will restart my uh, environment it will hopefully Remember that I want to boot this, so let's just let's just uh, restart from here. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Restart. And now, welcome to Grub. Yes, and you can see it remembered my choice, and this is all what I wanted to do. So, let's uh, call it a day, and thank you for joining me for this video. So these were all the things that we entered in our console today to solve our problems, and I hope you learned something new. I definitely did. I still did not learn how to use VI effectively. Maybe I will have to do that one day. But until then, see you next time. Bye-bye.